All right. I wanted to start this video off giving y'all some context so y'all can know, like I told y'all, I got uh, going on going on 15 years, going on 16 years of a home theater experience. I'm an audiophile, videophile, want the best sound and the best picture quality. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to get that, all right? It's just things that you need to know. I told y'all in my discussion video, I was gonna show y'all how to not get finessed. All right, we're gonna talk about finesse in this video. We're gonna talk about a lot of things in this video. I know my videos come off like uh, like lectures, but I mean, that's just the way I do them, all right? I try to encourage y'all to read and everything like that, but, but besides the reading, I'm giving y'all my experience, and that's something that you can't get everywhere, and that's something that everybody's not giving y'all, all right? I got a nephew, you know, I'm always, he says I lecture to him all the time, but I'm always trying to give him my experiences so he doesn't make the same mistakes that I made. All right. He always wants to throw it in my face. Well, I looked it up. I looked it up. Okay. That's just one part of it. All right. Now let my experience help you. All right. I told him just because you, you can look up how to fly a helicopter. doesn't mean you know how to fly one. All right. I can look that up. That doesn't mean I can jump in a cockpit in a helicopter and take off. Okay. So I want y'all to Look at this video, take all of this in. I know I keep reiterating this before I get started, but it's very important that you watch this till the end. I made this video over several uh, days and I'm just putting it all together because I know y'all been waiting on this video. All right, we're gonna cover a lot of stuff in this video. I got a lot of people on uh, different, uh, coming in the comment section that's on other YouTubers videos, telling me stuff that they get from other YouTubers and all this type of stuff, like I said, you know. I watch YouTube too, but like I said, it's a lot of fluff, all right? I'm gonna get around all of that. I'm gonna get around the finesse, everything, all right? I'm gonna present this to you like it hasn't been presented to you before. And I'm going straight from the comment section. Some of y'all send me comments and it'll take me three paragraphs to explain some of this stuff to y'all. It's not like a one comment answer. Uh, a lot of y'all know I respond quickly to uh, stuff, but if you send me a comment, and I don't respond, it's a complicated answer, and I tell you, video is on the way. I'm putting all of that in this video, because I don't know when the next video is just gonna be dropping like that. So pay attention, and let's get into it. Now, one of the things that I wanna start with, all right, and everything, whether you're gaming, whether you're watching movies, whatever it is, it's all related, all right? It's all related. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I got the Xbox One X pulled up, all right? I'm going to go into the settings, all right? Go into the settings. Because since day one, everybody's been talking to me about motion, all right? Everybody, videos got bad motion. Videos got bad motion, all right? You know, people on other channels say stuff like that. We're about to dead all that, all right? Just pay attention and let's get into it. Now, like I told y'all in my discussion video, we're going to go over here to TV and display options, all right? I'm going to go right over here to 4K TV details. Click on it. Like I told y'all in the discussion video, this Vizio M series checks off all the boxes, all right? Everything's checked off. Your TV supports 4K UHD at 60 hertz. TV supports 4K 10-bit at 24 hertz. TV supports 4K 10-bit at 50 hertz. TV supports 4K 10-bit at 60 hertz, all right? Your TV supports HDR10, Dolby Vision, and uh, the Xbox One X doesn't support HDR10+, plus, but this TV supports that too, all right? Uh, your TV uh, setup supports for native 4K gaming, supports HDR10 for gaming, supports capturing 4K game clips and screenshots, all right? Also, your TV supports capturing HDR clips and screenshots. The TV is very capable. All right, so it's not the TV. We're gonna get into that. Cause a lot of things is going on. You got a lot of people out there giving a lot of misinformation cause they're not giving you the full picture. All right, they're giving you a part of the story and again, not giving you the whole story and creating this whole fluff narrative based off of a little bit of information. That's not what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you the full picture so you got a full understanding of uh, how good the TV is. Just because something's not right that you're looking at through the TV doesn't necessarily mean it's the, it's the TV's fault that 
it doesn't look right. All right. It's not all about the TV. It's all it's the source. Also, what's going into the TV. All right. Now. We're going to start off with motion. All right. And this will relate to you as far as gaming and movies. All right. Motion. I get a, a lot of questions about motion. You know, everybody wants to ask me, is this a 120 hertz panel? Is this a, a 60 hertz panel? And uh, we're going to get through the finesse and the fluff today. All right. So I'm not calling out any YouTubers. I don't do that. I don't knock hustles. I don't know. People got to pay their bills. They got to feed their kids. But uh, when your uh, subscribers or people on your channel come over here and ask me questions, I'm going to give it to them straight up. You know, I've been on some of y'all's channels. I'll go in there and ask you an intelligent question to give you a suggestion to help you out. And I won't get a response or I'll get blocked. And it's fine. I don't say anything about it. I don't care. That's your thing. Anybody comment on my channel, any comment you have, any question you have, whether it's good, bad, whatever. I'm not deleting anything. All right. If you if you bring me some information and it's valid information, I'm going to test it out. All right. That's how you that's how that's how this works. All right. There's no narrative here. I'm going to test it out. If you give me something I didn't think about and I didn't know about it, I'm going to try it out. And then if it's good information, I'm going to turn around and share it with other people. All right. I'm not going to block you because I don't agree with what you're saying. I, I, I welcome challenge to uh, what I'm doing for y'all and what and my process. I welcome it. I want to learn more. I want to get better. All right. This is this is a process. And I've been in this over 15 years. So uh, if I'm on your channel and I'm asking you a question intelligently and you block me, it just lets me know you all about that fluff. I'm not calling out any names, but. All the questions that's been brought to me from other channels are going to be addressed in this video. And I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just addressing the uh, stuff that was brought to me. And one of the main things is motion. So let's get into this motion thing, all right? So as you can see, the TV supports 24 hertz, 60 hertz, 50 hertz, all right? 24 hertz and 10 bit 4K. All right, now, what you need to know is, when, when we get into this motion thing, your movies, all right, when you're watching movies, they're displayed at 24 hertz, all right? Now, when you get Judder, when you get Judder, all right, this is why you get Judder, all right? Let's go over here. 4K, let me grab my remote. Cool thing about the Vizio, you got an info button. I hit this info button. We're at 2160p, but the TV is being displayed at 60 hertz. All right, 60 hertz. So when you start streaming a movie that's 24 hertz and the TV is displaying at 60 hertz, there's a lot of frames there that are open. All right, the TV is displaying with more frames than what you're watching. That's why you have all this stutter. That's, that's why I tell y'all in a, a video file, I like physical media. All right, physical media. So what happens, right? TVs, you got movies that are at 24 hertz, 24 frames per second, right? When I put a disc in, the TV's capable of 24 hertz, 24 frames. No dips, no gaps, nothing. It will display it perfectly. I go over here to this Blu-ray disc. The Xbox is about to leave 60 hertz, right? It's gonna turn, it's gonna black out for a second because it has to change the frame rate. It has to change the hertz, see that? It just switched it up. When it does that, now it's displaying and 24 hertz all right so when i'm watching movies with my discs all right because the tv's capable of displaying at 24 hertz all right all your film is in 24 hertz so when i'm watching a disc all right a disc it will display at 24 hertz eliminating judder all right you can watch movies judder free on this tv you got 60 hertz, you got more than enough hertz to watch movies. Now, I understand that a lot of people now, let's cut this off. And as I turn this off, 
it's gonna black out again because it's gonna flip back to 60 hertz mode. All right, just flip back to 60 hertz. Now understand that a lot of us watch streaming, right? And when you're streaming movies, what's creating your judder, what's creating your judder, all right, is the fact that the streaming device is displaying at 60 and you're watching something at 24, all right? Now, the Vizio on its own as a display won't switch the frame rate, but the source can switch the frame rate for you, all right? But it's capable of displaying at 24. So just like I showed y'all in my last video with the uh, Amazon Fire Stick, all right? A lot of streaming devices are beginning to do this, but I'm gonna switch over to the Fire Stick, all right? Real time. I gave y'all my settings, all right? The Fire Stick displays at 60 automatically. It displays at 60 hertz. But because in my settings, I have a just frame rate turned on, a lot of streaming devices, if they're not doing this, they should be doing this. That way, when you're playing something through a, through a streaming device or you're streaming media, right? When I hit this show right here, and I can't show you this show, I'm just gonna hit play. It's gonna say adjusting the frame rate, just like on the Xbox, when it blacked out for a second, it had to switch from 60 to 24. This is a streaming device. This is an Amazon 4K Fire Stick. So when I hit play, adjusting video frame rate, all right? It blacked out, it switched it to 24. Streaming devices are doing this now. So just because you're seeing Judder on a TV, it has nothing to do with the TV, all right? Adjusting the frame rate, that's all it took. Same way the Xbox does with discs, now streaming devices are doing that. Let me pause this, because we can't, we can't watch any of this, all right? So let me go ahead and pause it, get away from it. I just wanted to show y'all, through streaming devices now, it will adjust the frame rate to 24 hertz. When it adjusts the frame rate, it eliminates judder. But you got a lot of misinformation out there where, oh, this TV has judder, this TV it has motion problems, it has motion issues, it has this, that, and the third, but there's no context to these comments. They're just saying these things and saying that the TV is bad, or there's something wrong with the TV, but they're not actually explaining to you how this stuff works, all right? Streaming devices, you can eliminate judder now on the 4K Fire Stick and other streaming devices I've heard in my comment section. It's people giving me information that uh, useful information, and when I get useful, useful inf information from them, I give it to y'all, all right? Let's go back, let's get off the fire stick. Let's go back to the Xbox. Well, I don't, I don't have it on Xbox because I've, I've been switching back and forth from this to the projector to show y'all stuff. But it just blacked out, we're back in 60 hertz. All right, so when you're watching movies, all right? Movies, 24 hertz. The TV's capable of 24 hertz. All right, if you're watching movies, you can get a perfect frame rate with this TV through discs and through streaming. But if you don't have a streaming device that adjusts that frame rate for you, that's where your judder is gonna come in at, all right? And that's why you have things like black frame insertion, which I use, all right? Everything I'm saying to y'all is relevant to my settings, so I'm gonna break all this down to y'all so y'all so understand it. Let's talk about motion when it comes to gaming. All right, gaming. Now, currently, the best you could get as far as gaming is concerned is 60 frames, especially if you wanna be in uh, 4K. That's about the best you can get. So everybody out here talking about, I, want, I need 120 hertz, uh, I need 120 hertz TV. What do you need 120 hertz for? All right, most of your games are 4K 30. There's a lot of videos about uh, the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There's a lot of backlash about it being uh, 30 frames on a next-gen console, all right? A lot of backlash, but mo the majority of your 4K games are 30 frames, all right? And then, as far as 60 frames, that's what they should be aiming for. That's what the Xbox One X can do, 4K 60 FPS. Now you got to go out here and spend twelve hundred dollars for a low end, maybe sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars for a good computer 
that can handle and play 4K 60 frame gaming and do it well, all right? And you got all of that in this Xbox One X, 4K 60 frames. All right, so for everybody out there talking about, I need 120 frames, because 120 uh, hertz gaming is coming out, this, that, and the third, look, dude, they, they haven't even mastered 4K 60 yet. That's why I keep telling y'all to play Gears. I say, look, play Gears 5. That is the best looking game, frame rate wise, visual wise, that I've seen. That lets you know what your Xbox One X is capable of. You play Gears 5, you'll sit, you like, dang, the Xbox, it is capable. It's up to the game developers to optimize these games to utilize the power of the consoles. All right, I'm turning on Hellblade, all right? Turn on Hellblade. There's some, there's games that I prefer, look at those black levels, all right? These are all my settings, I'm gonna get into the settings, but I gotta give y'all context, all right? HDR just kicked in. But when we're talking about gaming, when we're talking about frame rates, all right, y'all y'all asking me about 120 hertz versus 60 hertz. They're not even building games to take advantage of the hardware that we have now. All right? The TV is more than capable. The TV can it is displaying these things. It can display 4K 60 hertz 10 bits. All right? There are no there are no um 12 bit panels right now. There are none. There are no 12-bit panels. They don't exist, all right? Not yet. 10 bits, the best you could get, you're getting a 10-bit panel with this TV right here. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna start the game up. Look at the black levels. I'm just gonna start this game up because you can run this game at 60 frames. This TV has no problem doing 60 frames and that's the limit of what gaming can do all right so when you get these 120 hertz tvs they 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 offer a thing called frame interpolation frame interpolation all right frame interpolation that's not new technology i have a 2010 panasonic that had frame interpolation the problem with that is it creates artifacts all right artifacts so you take a game that's at 30 frames and your TV's running at 120 frames, what's it gonna do with all that empty space? All right, to smooth that out, what frame interpolation does is it creates frames, all right? It's putting information there that the game developers didn't put in there. It's putting stuff there that's not there. The, the, compute, uh, the TV is digitally, artificially creating frames that aren't even in the game. And that's why you have artifacting, all right? That's why you have motion artifacts, all right? Not a big fan of frame interpolation because it's introducing things there that weren't there to begin with. If you look at this right here, game is beautiful, man. Beautiful. Look how smooth it is. Frame interpolation. Even when you watch movies, when you turn that on, you get artifacts. Because even though the movie's at 24 frames, right? The video cut out, sorry about that. But even though you got, uh, you got games, or the movies rather, that are 24 frames, but your TV's 120 frames, all right? What your TV's gonna do when you turn on that frame interpolation, it's gonna create frames that weren't there and that's why and it, it's it's guesstimating where the next frame is going to be and making copies and putting it in there itself all right so it's not going to look it it's it's smooth but it, it, there's artifacting and i hate artifacts all right black frame insertion on the other end what i like to use flickers the backlight when it flickers the backlight it's basically turning the entire backlight off in between frames, giving you smooth motion without introducing artifacts, all right? Even though the flicker's there, it's not visible to your eye, but it's going in between frames. So when you use a black frame insertion, none of the information that's in the game or on your movie, either way, none of the information there is being added, but 
in those gaps where you might have a frame skip or something like that, every other frame is not being, you're not, is not visible to you because of that flicker, which gives you clearer motion. All right. Nothing's being added. Just what's visible to you as far as uh, what you can see with that on, you're getting smoother motion. All right. So if I'm playing a game at 4k, 30 Hertz, 30 FPS, right? And the Xbox is running at 60 Hertz and I turn on black frame insertion and it's inserting a black frame in between each frame that'll match my frame rate up to 30 so I can have smooth motion without all that uh, judder and extra gaps and extra space in between frames. All right, because the game is running at one frame rate and the display is going at another frame rate. That's why I like black frame insertion. That's why it looks smooth. That's why I keep it on. For y'all out there that are sensitive to black frame insertion, for y'all that can see the uh, flicker, I can't see it at all. Just like on my projector, some people see rainbows, some people don't. I don't see it, so it works perfectly for me. Motion looks great. All right. So, talking about motion, all right, 120 hertz, all right, 8K. Like I said in my discussion video, I'll wait, all right. The Xbox One X is capable of doing 1440p at 120 hertz on the Xbox One X. But go online and look up how many games are optimized to do that, all right. Go look at how many games are optimized to run 4K60 on the Xbox One X. There's about 40 of them. And they're currently making next-gen games at 30 FPS. It's not the TV, man. You got to optimize the game to be able to run 60, all right? Gears 5, phenomenal. Get Game Pass, play Gears 5. If you want to see smooth frame rate and incredible visuals, it will let you know. You'll say, damn. And I, uh, I will be making videos during the campaign of Gears. I just don't want to make this video too long going in depth about motion too much. Hopefully that explained motion to y'all a little bit. But right now, currently, 10-bit panels is as high as you can get, the best you can go. Look at that HDR. The best you can go, all right? 10-bit. This is a 10-bit panel. There are no 12-bit panels. You got that covered, all right? As far as gaming is concerned, 4K 60 frames locked. The TV is capable of doing that, but the games aren't optimized to do that. So when you're playing a game and you're seeing Judder and you're seeing this and you're seeing that, it's not the display, all right? The game is not optimized. Look how beautiful this is, man. Vizio M Series 2019, all right? Now, the 2020 Vizio is going to have variable refresh rates. Now, what variable re refresh rates will do, all right, because this TV can run at 60, the Xbox One S can, can do variable refresh rates. Now, even though this TV is more than capable of handling 60 FPS, if the game is not optimized to do that and there's frame dips in the game, that's when you start to see the little stutter because the game is not optimized. The game is having dips, not the TV. But with variable refresh rates, what they're going to have in the 2020 Vizios, right? With variable re refresh rates, when the game dips down to 58 or 57, the TV dips down to 58 or 57. All right? So it, it follows it and it stays in sync with it. All right? So the TV is compensating or making up for the lack thereof of game optimization. It's not the TV that's the problem, all right? It's not all about the TV. Everybody wants to blame the TV, say the TV's bad, but they're not giving you the whole story. And now, yeah, they're coming out with a new Xbox, right? A new Xbox, a new PS5. In my mind, it's a catch-22. I can go out here and buy a new uh, M-Series with variable refresh rates. So when the game's lack of optimization, there's frame dips in the game, my TV can sync with the game or because they're making a new console, maybe they should be optimizing these games better to run 4K locked 60. And if these games are designed to run better without frame dips, which they should be on a new console, then this 2019 is more than enough to handle 4K 10-bit 60 FPS. All right? The frame dips are coming from the game, not the TV. 
And I got the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. And the Xbox One X is the better console as far as not I have I support both companies, but as far as console to console, this is a more powerful, better console. I get more frame dips on my PS4 Pro than I do on the Xbox One X. It's just better. All right. Not talking about who's got better games, talking about a better system as far as it being optimized to run well. Because the TV is more than capable of handling uh, 4K, 10 bit, 60 hertz. And right now, games aren't optimized to do that. So it's not your TV. Some of y'all think y'all need a, two, a new TV and it's not the TV at all. Some of y'all think y'all need to go out there and spend $2,000 on a TV and it's not the TV at all. All right? Briefly getting into motion, all right? I want to throw that out there to y'all because uh, there's a thing going around on the internet called future-proofing, all right? Future-proofing. Future-proofing, you know what that is? You know what that, you know what that is to me? Value, tech sense. Future-proofing is overpaying for something you can't use yet. That's what future-proofing is. Overpaying for something you can't use yet, all right? That's what future-proofing is. People not gonna like me saying this, the companies, whatever, man. That's just the truth. That's why AK, I'll wait. All right, you remember when 4K TVs first came out? They were stupid, stupid expensive. And now those same TVs ain't worth nothing. You can get them on Black Friday. All right? You can get them for next to nothing. They ain't got no quantum dots, nothing. But, uh... When those 4K TVs first came out, they were crazy expensive, all right? Y'all wanna go out there and buy 8K, can't use it? That's just like paying rent somewhere and you can't move in the next year. But you're paying rent every month, but you can't move in yet. I mean, what's the point in that? That's future-proofing. That's going out there and spending money on something, paying for it today, and I can't use it for two years. That's future-proofing, overpaying for something that you can't use yet. That's some value tech sense for you, all right? So, just briefly getting into motion, and my thoughts on motion, that's why you're having motion issues. It is not the TV, all right? 60 hertz versus 120 hertz. Look, if you got an expensive PC and you, you can run games at higher frame rates, you're playing Fortnite, show me the game library that I can be running 1440p at 120 hertz on the Xbox One X. Because the Xbox One X is capable of, of that. But where are the games that are optimized to do that? Besides PUBG and uh, Rainbow Six, all right? Show me the game. What are the games? All right? Fortnite is running 4K, 4K 60 FPS on the Xbox One X. No problem. So, as far as gaming is concerned, this TV is more than enough of what you need for gaming, as gaming technology is where it is today. And as far as movies, 24 frames per second, on uh, Blu-ray, you straight, 4K disc, you straight, and now the, de the uh, streaming devices are adjusting the frame rate to 24 hertz. So people watching movies in 24 hertz, and now I need a 120 hertz TV. For what? It's running at 24, all right? I need 120 The games are running at 30 FPS, 60 FPS with frame dips, all right? The gaming industry is not ready for, for uh, 120 hertz TVs. Unless you want to use frame interpolation and, in, and introduce artifacts. Some of y'all take those artifacts for that fake smooth motion. Because it's not, it's not smooth. It's artificial smooth motion. It's created frames giving you artifacts. If they create a game to run at 60, the TV will run at 60. And there's no need for artifact and there's no need for uh, interpolation. I'll use black frame insertion. That doesn't add information. It just takes away from what I can see visually, but keeping the same information that was designed in the game in the game without adding artifacts and adding uh, problems with the game. All right, just getting into motion. All right, that's my take on motion: 60 hertz versus 120 hertz, and motion as far as this TV goes.